Hello and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to show you step by step what aspect oriented programming is and how you can do it in JavaScript. There exist a couple of libraries but I want to show you what happens at a basic level and how and why aspect oriented programming can help you to write better code. Assume we have a function at 3 to 5 which does nothing else than calculating 3 plus 5 and then we're going to write line we're going to output the result of this function. So when we try it out, we just print value 8 on the screen. Perfect. So let's assume you want to add some logging behavior. Or I would even call it an aspect, logging aspect. Logging is one of the, the, the most common examples in aspect or in programming. That's why I start with it. But I'm going to show you other examples as well. Okay. So basically we want to log whenever the function is called, okay, so console.log, um, let's say adding 3 to 5 for example, okay. So when we run the program, we're getting here this log adding 3 to 5. Cool, so <clears throat> how, about, how about this scenario when we have two functions, for example adding 2 to 5, we would have to change the log, we would have to change this and when we call it um, let's try it out okay adding 3 to 5, adding 2 to 5 so the real problem here is that you are mixing concerns uh, you're mixing multiple things into one function, in one function. Actually, uh, actually both these functions have only two lines of code, so it's not too complicated by now, but I'm going to show you some, uh, some more advanced stuff later. So, you have the logic of your logging here, and you have the logic of your calculation here, both in one function and you are violating the principle of separations of concern with that. Now, for example, if you also want to log the date, let's, let's say you want to log the, the date time when the function was called, we could say, okay, uh, we, can, we can add a new date, for example, var now is new date, and we can say, function was called at now. Alright, let's try it. Function was called at blah blah blah. Now the problem is we want, uh, for example, what do we do if we want if we want this functionality also in the above function? Okay, I mean we can just copy and paste it, but now you should you should see oh my gosh we have we have code repetition here okay this is not what we want so what what programmers most likely do in this scenario is they make a new function they make something like a my log function okay um, which gets a log message okay and this function would do something like this and in between we are logging the log message okay so that we will call log msg here all right and let's see if it works actually Oh my gosh, log msg is not defined. Yeah, because the function's name is my log. Okay, let's try it again. All right, so we have the logging behavior in both functions and we have to call just one line. So when we make a change, when we want to make a change in our logging logic, we have only one place where we have to make the change. So problem solved, right? Actually, there's one other problem going on here. We still have two kinds of logic in one function. So, 
we would assume a function that says add 3 to 5 to just add those two numbers. But actually the function does two things. Namely, it locks something out and then it calculates the sum we want it to calculate. Okay. Furthermore, the functions add 3 to 5 and my log are what we called tightly coupled because the function add 3 to 5 relies on my log to exist. Okay. This function add 3 to 5 cannot be executed without my log. Now, what's the implication of that? Let's assume uh, three months later you, you have a new project going on, okay? New project and you're given the task to write a function that adds 3 to 5, okay? And you, you th when you think about it, you, you suddenly remember, oh my gosh, three months ago I, I already coded a function that added those numbers. So you go back to your old project, you just copy and paste that function in your new project, then you try to call that function and it doesn't work because the function only works when my log exists. So you can say, okay, then I would have to like copy and paste my log as well, but you see that you just don't want it, right? Because think, think in, in more complex dimensions. What if you write a math library, for example? You write lots of code um, that, that does some calculation. So what you do not want to have in a math library are functions that are doing actually things different to math things, right? You don't want logging functions in your math library, right? So by the dependence, by creating that dependencies, you, you are creating problems. And we need to find a way to, to get rid of this tightly coupled style. And this is where aspect-oriented programming kicks in. Okay, to solve this problem, I'm going to use some techniques I already used in the memoization video. So uh, if, if it looks too unfamiliar to you, what I'm doing now, you can watch that memoization video and I hope it works out. So I'm going to have a function log before, which, which writes out the log before the actual function it is called, okay? So as a parameter we're going to we're going to have the function that has to be executed after the log and the log message of course. Okay. And this function returns another function, a new function, okay? So we're going to return um, a function and inside this function we're going to log out that message console.log log message all right and then we are calling the function okay we are calling the function and we are returning its return value so for example let's let's have just one one new example we can say here um add 2 to 5 log, okay, and we can create a new function with this building block here, with log before, okay, we want to have a log before this function, okay, and we want to log adding 2 to 5, okay, so obviously we do not need this anymore, and we can write line at 2 to 5 log, okay? And let's see if it works. All right, here it is, 7 and add, adding 2 to 5, okay? So what happens here is that we create a new function that is called add to the 5 underscore log. Okay, we create that new function. And when this function is called, this code here is executed. This code is executed. All right. This code is executed with those parameters, with the log message adding to the 5 
and that function being actually this one okay so this works via closures so the closures enable us to access the values of the outer function inside the inner function okay and as this function is returned we can add it to to a new variable actually it is also possible to overwrite the existing function with that new one okay so we can do also something like this and this will also work okay load file here we are 7 and adding 2 to 5 okay so this does also work okay there's one more thing we have to cope with and that's parameters alright uh, so basically we have functions that have parameters like this add function and the question is how do we how do we call this function with the parameters because like before does not know if this function has parameters and how many it has okay there's there's an easy JavaScript trick or, or technique to cope with that okay so basically basically in every function there exists one variable that that you do not have to define and this is called argument oops arguments okay now this is um, it's not really an array but it sometimes behaves like an array and it it's just it's just something like an array that contains all the arguments okay of that function so the the thing is um, we cannot simply pass arguments here because it would be because you would have this would mean that you have one argument which is an array but we're going to have multiple arguments so the way you can do this in JavaScript is by calling fn dot apply okay so this function is applied with that arguments alright and apply also demands a parameter that that initializes that this pointer of the function that is called we're going to use just this here okay if you want to know more about that uh, consult uh, the documentation or uh, if you want to I can make a video about it just just tell me the important thing for us is that using this code we can call this function with the actual arguments with the actual function arguments okay and okay so let's try it so we are again uh, overriding the definition of the add function with log before um, add and the log message would be adding two numbers okay so let's see if that works adding two numbers and the result is five very good I just want to show you some more examples um, I have here my log before function okay this is the one we developed together I also made a version of it that logs after the function apply I have also a measure time function here that writes out on the console the execution time of the function call I still have my add function and I'm going to apply all these aspects to the add function now a word of warning here you have to think about if you want to actually override your function or if you want to for example make a new function okay so the difference is how it behaves when using recursion because when using recursion and you overwrite this function here um, the overwritten version of that function will be executed in the recursion okay so so in the so the recursion itself will use all the aspects over and over again so this is what you have to take care 
off. Actually, when you do something like memorization, you, you would most likely want to have that feature. If you use something like measure time, maybe you, you only want to measure the time between the first and the last call. So, uh, in this case, you would, you would probably um, have something like this. Okay, so just a word of warning, take care, think about what you want and what's best for your code. So finally, let's try it out. Load file, okay, we get five as a result. Begin adding and adding. Execution time is almost nothing, so let's add some stuff here. So the, the function takes a little bit longer, just some loops, load file, okay, execution time, point to eight, actually it works. So that's it for the video. I hope you liked it and I wish you all the best. Happy coding and see you next time.